No matter what the season, there is sure to be a party going on. Look your best for every occasion today on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible in part by Elliott Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics. ElliottBermanTextiles.com There are so many occasions and celebrations to attend throughout the year. Hi, I'm Peggy Sagers. It's easy to look and feel great for any occasion with just a few key pieces that can really dress you up or dress you down. And we're gonna take a look at the greatest base of all, which is called the sheath dress. When we say dress, it really is a very broad generic term. So, and many women say to me, well, I'm making a dress. What should I do with the sleeves? Or what should I do with the armholes? And a dress can be a jacket dress. It can be a blouse dress and it can be a t-shirt dress. So let me make sure we're understanding the difference between those because the armhole makes all the difference and when we decide how we want the armhole. If we're taking a jacket and we could cut it long and make it what they used to call a coat dress, or it really is the sheath dress. The sheath dress can be all of those. Sometimes we use a blouse and we made it into a dress and we called that the shirt dress. And then we made a t-shirt or a tank top and we made that into a dress and we called it the tank dress. So they're all dresses. Recognize that they all, by the definition of dress, just means they cover the top of the body and the bottom of the body. So when we are making a dress, what we have to characterize or differentiate is what is the structure of the sleeve and the armhole? What do we want that dress to have? So that way we'll know whether it's actually our jacket armhole, our blouse armhole, or our knit armhole. We've learned previously that we can decide which armhole we want, but we're gonna to have to choose and decide which one we want when we go to do the fitting. So we're gonna bring on Jeannie because what we're gonna do is dress, dress the sheath. And when we drape this, it's really, really important to get the fit correct. So we've got our tissue out. We wanna make sure we drape on Jeannie and then make the transfers back to the tissue. Again, we can use the dress and we can decide that this is what we're going to do. We're gonna make the changes on the muslin and not on the tissue. We can use the muslin as our pattern, but just when we're making that muslin, just a few key things to remember. Number one, especially with the dress, leave the opening in the front. It's so much easier. Even if the pattern doesn't have an opening in the front, just go ahead and use the stitch line as your center front and, and stitch it up and leave extra seam allowances so you can get it off and on and that way you won't be dealing, if the sheath dress has a zipper in the back, you don't even have to deal with that. It's all closed up. So many women say to me, I'm going here, what should I wear, a sheath dress? I'm going here, what should I wear, a sheath dress? It just absolutely makes you look your tallest, your thinnest you possibly can. The most exciting thing is, is we're gonna also explore a sleeve if you decide to have a jacket sleeve on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drape one side with a shoulder pad I'm gonna drape the other side without. As long as you're doing a sheath dress, we can do it for all of those different looks that we want. So we can do it for a jacket on this side, we can do it for a blouse and a t-shirt on this side, and that way we've covered all of our possibilities. And we get the most out of the draping. We still, nothing else will change, we only have to do this draping once. Except if you have been like Jeannie, and Jeannie's lost weight. And if we go to look at these hips, Wow, I mean, is there nothing sweeter in life than a female taking in the hips on a pattern? It just doesn't get any better than that, I don't think. Okay, so again, we're gonna start top and go to bottom. Start at the base of the neck. When we start at the base of the neck here, we're looking for length. And this side I'm gonna drape without a shoulder pad. Now notice on this shoulder here, if I were just to take this in, anytime there's a shoulder pad involved, the shoulder seam is sometimes moved back just a twee bit. When the shoulder pad's in place, it's not noticed. But when the shoulder pad is taken away, and if I just take out equally on both sides, the seam has a tendency to fall back a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is move it forward, 
There is no right place for that shoulder seam to be. However, the goal of the shoulder seam is to give me control both over the back of the dress and the front of the dress. And so without that in place, I lose that control. If it's too far back, I lose control over the front. If it's too far forward, I lose control over the back. Now, did you catch me? You notice you're not supposed to be doing this first. We're just going to length. But I just wanted to kind of clean that up a little bit while we looked at it. All right, so I've got the dress closed up in the front. And I'm going to first do length, which is the base of the neck to the bust point. And if we remember, we don't even have to worry. We've got a princess seam. Princess seams, you know, really can't be wrong in the bust area as far as length goes because there's a bust circle. And as long as they fall within that bust circle, then they're okay. And the pattern would have to be pretty bad to not fall within that bust circle. So as far as length goes, that is not wrong. It's just a design choice that the princess seam is not going right through the bust point. It's going off to the side. I don't know why we'd want it to go through the bust point, but many sewers believe that that princess seam should go right through the bust point. It should not. Turn her to the back, to the waist. And this is probably by far the hardest thing to do on yourself. That's not to say it's hard. I'm not going to go there. But recognize that many sewers, because a lot of sewers, They'll come up to me and they'll say, oh, you know, I've got to sway back. Like, you know what you've got wrong. And for some reason, you just can't do it. So I think it's the knowledge versus actually being able to do it. So I'm going to keep, again, it's only important that I do here and taper to nothing. So let's just make that change on our tissue. I've got the tissue down. Here's the dress back. I start at center back. I'm going to measure how far down that change is. And you notice it's right at 12 and a half. And at 12 and a half, I take out a half inch. So right down at center back, I measure the 12 and a half. And at 12 and a half, boom, I take out that half inch. Then what you want to do is measure how far down on the second seam. Include your seam allowance, because your seam allowance is on the pattern. And it's really easy to just include that seam allowance. It'll get you more accurate. I'm at 13 inches. And at 13 inches, I take in a quarter inch. So we're going to go here. Then I go to the adjoining piece. And what I do is I always usually lay them down so that they are, they go together how they're actually sewn. And then I can measure the same amount down. And I know exactly how much to take there. And these two numbers are always going to be the same because there are seams and those length of those seams have to match. So those are always going to be the same. And then you'll see it'll just taper to nothing. And this is what's called my pivot point. So I gradually get this dart. Um, and that's what a sway back is. It's when the center back length is shorter at center back than it is at the side. And that's what the fabric is telling us that it's shorter. And you can see now how it just lays beautiful. And now the tissue will actually reflect what we just did on the muslin. This is something that can't be changed afterwards. So if it's wrong when you cut the fabric, there's no way to fix it. And so this is really an important reason that we want to do a muslin. It looks so much better. It just looks so much better. OK, now let's go ahead and look at circumference because length is good. In a dress, you do have three lengths. It's base to neck to bust, bust to waist, and waist to hip. A hip can't be wrong. It really just can't be in the wrong place. If you do notice when you do um, depth, we won't do it right now, but you want to watch the bottom of the dress. Right now, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to do circumference first. But the hip line can't really be wrong. It, it, there's no indication, because it's hanging from the shoulder, that there'd be anything wrong in the dress, except if there's some type of indicator where it has to match the body. But the hip line is probably the easiest area to fit, because there's no real connection from garment to body at that point. All right, so now what I get to do is look, Jeannie, Jeannie. inches, inches, inches. This is all the results of her hard physical therapy, and no chocolates, and all those decisions added all up to one. And this is the joy. Well, I always believe that we should fit into our sheath dress on a weekly basis. Maybe not. All right, so we're going to take that in. When you take it in, you want to do both sides. I'm just going to do that one side just for now, so because it does affect all the areas. And you want to make sure after you take it in that she can actually sit down. So then what I want to do, and you can measure from the underarm seam. I think that's the easiest place to just start to measure where you started that change. And that change was started at 6 inches. 
and then measure the fullest part. At 10 inches down, I was two inches in. So what I'm gonna use is my French curve and then a little bit of the numbers I just measured. At six inches down is where I started. And then at 10 inches down, I think that's what I said. Is that right? Let me make sure I got it right. I don't think that was right. No, at, at 16 inches down, I was two inches in. Okay, so there's where the fullest part was, was right here. And at that part, I was two inches in. Now, those interim pins that you did, you did all those pins so that you could visually see that it looked right. But because you're using the French curve, you really don't need all those pins. All you're going to do is take the French curve and connect those two points, and you're going to find that those will match all those interim pins you did. The curve has to be convex at that point of the body, and then that simply is going to follow this all the way down. You can see you've picked up a point on the pattern. So then you can just pick up a point on the pattern. So she actually is a four in the top and a one at the bottom. Yee! <laughs> what, what person doesn't want to be that shape? But anyway, so that's how you're going to do it. You don't have to duplicate every pin. If you wanted to, and you wanted to go ahead and use the tissue, then what you could do is just add, stitch the seam, and then make sure you lay your French curve on it before you stitch it, mark it, and then add a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then cut everything else away, and this could become your tissue. Okay, easy enough to do that. Okay, so we've got length, we've got circumference. Let's tweak everything, and we call that depth. And that's just, I think it really is what makes a garment outstanding as opposed to just good. So we really want to take a look at that. This is the shoulder seam. This is the bust start. This is all of those little things that are somehow not right. Those are the time to fix them. And I always start at the top and go down. So I'm going to start with the shoulder seam and I'm going to pick it up. And notice that when you're taking away the shoulder pad and making it sleeveless, you might have more than one change. So in this case, I've got not only a change at the shoulder angle, but I've also got a change in front of that. Now, actually, you know, before I do that, I'm actually going to narrow the shoulder. I'm going to leave those pins in because this is just too wide for her. And I think it's a little easier to do the alteration if we do, it doesn't really matter, but I think it's just a little bit easier to do the vertical before I do the horizontal. So I'm going to take this in here, and I'm going to turn Jeannie just a little bit there. And if you notice, because the top of our body is concave, this will end right about the bust point placement. So if I go back to the tissue, this is in the front, and you notice it's right along this piece. And I can either cut it off or I can just make a fold just how I did and carry down to the bust point. If I do that in the front, I have to come to the back. It's here. I want to do the same amount so that the shoulder width matches. But in the back, it's going to end right about the shoulder blade, whereas in the front, it'll come down farther. So it'll naturally be higher in the back. It'll stop higher in the back. It'll extend a little bit lower in the front. All right, now let's go ahead and do this shoulder seam. I think it doesn't, again, make a difference which one is done correctly. I just think the pins will lay a little smoother as we cross those two joints. And we're going to clean that up. Remember, this is the sleeveless side. And then there. Let me turn this around just a little bit. I'm going to remember to take this in and make it narrower. Boy, when those shoulders are in the right place, it really makes a difference, the width of the shoulders. The width of the shoulders, there's no anatomy that, that it goes by. But I think in general, if you follow visually up from the side of the body and go up, that's where you want that shoulder line to end. All right, and we're going to take this out of the seam. And you can see that just smooths that and makes it completely nice. I've got a gap here, but if you notice if I pull this up, that gap is still there. So that means the gap is not from the shoulder seam. We're going to fix it in a minute. The shoulder seam can only be so angled. You can only take so much away. And that's why it's the shoulder seam and the dart that work in conjunction, in conjunction, I guess the word is, to really take care of all this. But let's change the shoulder angle. And what I want to do is put those two pieces together. And the amount I change here is just a straight angle line. So I can actually just mark it. And then put the two pieces. I could actually overlap those two pieces. 
and then make the straight angle line. And that will automatically make sure that these two seams align. In the front, I'm going to move this over here because this is the side panel. I actually took a little bit more out of the front of this. I not only changed the angle, I'm going to put those together. So I not only changed this angle here, but I also took out an additional piece and I'm going to measure that to make sure again I transfer it accurately. What I've noticed that's a 3 8 of an inch tuck and it is two inches in front of the shoulder seam. What I've noticed with women as they drape their muslin and make their changes on the tissue and then go back, there's errors made. I'm a big believer in using that muslin as the pattern, as your tissue. But there's many women who just don't want to do that. So um, I really want to show you both ways. You can do whatever's comfortable for you. So two inches down, there's a 3 8 of an inch. And again, you can put those pieces together because it's a straight angle line that just comes right into here. Don't, don't let yourself get nervous that there's two changes going on in one place. They're different changes, they're for different reasons, and the verticals and the horizontals can cross one another without any problem. And that will just really give us a great look. All right, let's clean up that bust start, and then there's one other little thing I wanna show you. So because Jeannie is a little bit bigger than a D cup, now the whole world knows, um, but because that dart, it was a D cup when we started, it was transferred up to the shoulder seam. So you're going to have these angular lines and that's your sign. You'll have a gap here and you'll have angular lines. When I take fabric away here, it cleans this up and it pulls up those lines. It does both things. So this is just an easy little fix. It's why a princess seam and a sheath dress is always going to be our best friend for fitting. I can do it without a princess seam. I just have to do it a little bit differently. So this princess seam is a real easy way to go. I think a princess seam is so flattering and beautiful anyway. That's actually about 5 8 of an inch. And because I've done the front seam, I actually have to do the back seam also. And notice that kind of goes right into that other one we did. So we can combine those two. And it's already done in the back. Or we maybe have to make that a little bit larger and that's okay too. All right, so at the side seam there, let's just measure again to make sure what I've got. And I start that at two inches down and it is five eighths of an inch wide. So I wanna come to my side seam. And notice here's the alteration that it's coming into is what's happening. So the two inches down and the five eighths inch wide. And so what I did is I actually just deepened this just a little bit. So just remeasure that and you can blend those two in together. And the sway back actually blends into that dart adjustment at the side seam. And then don't forget to come to this side, go my two inches down, my five eighths of an inch. If you've done, these are really not a lot of changes. I mean, actually, they're just, you know, when you think about the grand scheme of things, of all the differences in our body, it's pretty hard to make a pattern for every shoulder angle and for every bust size exactly. So these are pretty normal changes that have to take place. Be patient with the process and really you want to make sure that this thing fits. These are easy to do and the changes are pretty simple to make. I think we just need the knowledge and we need to be aware of them. When we do a dress, there's something I want you to watch for and I'm going to move Jeannie back just a little bit so they can kind of get the bottom of that hemline. If you notice that side seam is coming forward just a slight little bit, I want the hem to be straight. So whenever you are doing a dress, watch the hem. The hem has no responsibility of being right or straight or correct or anything else. It's the fault of the dress that is construing, I'm going to call that hem. So I'm going to take up a little bit more right in here. I wouldn't put it in the same place as that sway back because um, it, it's better to have it in two different places, but I'm just going to pick it up at the back and what you'll notice is that's what will pull that side seam back and it will straighten the hem. And so then it's just a matter again of measuring where that is, how much it is, and if you really do watch the cloth and play with it, I think it's why I love to drape, the cloth will really tell you what to do, where to do it, and how much to do it. And there's always an answer. The answer is either L, C, or D, length, circumference, or depth. 
and it's just really enjoyable and fun to watch and the improvements are just rampant. So again, we're gonna mark that on the tissue. When we did the jacket, we didn't get a chance to do the sleeve and I really wanna do a sleeve. I really wanna do it on this side. I don't even need to worry about that, um, the shoulder angle or anything like that, but a sleeve has lengths to it. And so I'm gonna put this on her and the, the lower seam, when you look at a sleeve, the lower seam is the front, the higher seam in the, is the back. I'm gonna put this on her, and the reason I wanna put it on her is simply to get a length positioning. And many women don't know this about two-piece sleeves, but arms bend, arms bend forward, obviously. Sleeves do too, but sometimes they don't bend forward at the right place the same amount. So look for the dart to be done in the front. And if I do a little dart right here, and again, all it is is done right in the front, it will taper to nothing in the back. You can see the dramatic difference that that makes on her sleeve. So what we wanna do then is the same thing. I wanna measure from the seam allowance, how far down that is. It's five inches down, and it's only a half inch. So let's go to the sleeve pattern. And let's just measure, and if you notice, and, and again, you put the sleeves, how they actually get sewn together, you notice this is the front because of the bend, and this is the front because of the bend. So I'm gonna measure here, I went five inches down, and I did a, just a little half inch there. Okay, perfect. And then I wanna do the same place here, and it'll keep the lengths of those two sleeves the same, those two seams the same, and what will happen is this is my taper point over here. It's where it tapers to nothing and the pattern will still lay flat. So we are great to go. Thanks, Jeannie. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna show a few things of what we're gonna do with the sheath dress. We will in the next few episodes do lots of things with the sheath dress, but maybe, mainly just right now, a little party dress. This is the sheath dress. All we did at the bottom is add a little bit of a peplum. It's really important when you do a sheath dress, the proportions are always right. So if you do to your knee, um, depending on your height, I'm gonna use the number 40 inches because Jeannie is 5'8", so she's 40 inches from her shoulder to her knee. And when you measure that number, simply measure from the shoulder. Don't measure over the bust. It's not a depth measurement. It's simply a linear view or perspective. So it's 40 inches to the bottom, and where do you decide to make that peplum should be either halves, thirds, fourths, or fifths. In this case, I'm going to make it fourths. So that means of the 40 inches, if I divide by fifths, I get eight. I get five parts. Each of those is eight inches. Five times eight is 40. Four of them are gonna be the top and eight is gonna be the bottom. So that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a eight inch strip that is going to be the peplum. I put a little mark on there for where the eight was. I didn't just randomly cut. So take the bottom and put the front, what you wanna do is put the front and the back, to, or not the front and the back together, but the front, like put those two together and then cut the width. And you can actually use your tissue to do this. I'm just cutting a piece so to kind of make it easy. But what you'd wanna do is overlap these two and put those two on there to make sure this width is the same. Then to add the peplum, what I'm gonna do is just cut up from the bottom and spread it. And just make your cuts equal and your spreads even. And then you can add, usually a peplum is at least one and a half to one. If you want really full, you make it two to one. So you measure how wide this is and make the hem double that. You can put the center back on a fold, the front on a fold, and just have one seam on the side. And it makes a great little flippy, flirty little party dress. This is done in shears. Shears are wonderful to work with. Let's go to the machine and I'll just show, show you a few little finishes on shears that are really easy to do. Most of the time we know about our French seam and our French seam is just right sides done together and then it's flipped to enclose those right seams to where you can see how beautiful that is. You can't even see what's inside. Then we can do a little rolled edge. We can do it on the serger or the rolled edge is when we literally, when we literally do this twice, we fold it once and we fold it twice. And we do a nice little rolled edge on the machine. So this is really common on all kinds of outfits you'll see where it's just doubled over. 
very simple to do and you can just follow along. Of course your thread would be matching. I just really wanted to show you how beautiful that makes an edge. The other edge I wanted to show you is with binding. And when I do it with binding, get a very narrow, you can get whatever width you want, but usually narrow works the nicest. And I'm gonna open up that seam binding and just stitch it. And you can make your own seam binding also. You don't have to buy the purchase, but I'm just literally gonna lay that in there and stitch it along. And then what that will do for me is I can now wrap this to the inside and I get a beautiful clean finish. This is really nice for the bottom of dresses because it gives it a little more weight. That seam binding is terrific. So then I wanna show you just another quick finish. And I'm gonna turn a machine to an edge finish. What I want is a lot of stitches. I'm gonna stitch just to where it comes off the cloth so what you want is something that has just a lot of little stitches and what happens is the needle is actually when it goes to the right is actually off the fabric. You don't want to do a zigzag. A zigzag really isn't enough stitches to where it can do what you need it to do. But you can see that that just really finishes off the edge of that. You can actually go back and clip those off without any problem. When the occasion calls for something dressy, great fit and great fabric make the statement. Next time on Fit to Stitch. Visit fittostitch.com for more information on the projects found on today's show. This is show 403. If you enjoyed today's show and want to learn more about fitting with Peggy Sagers, a DVD set of all 13 episodes of Fit to Stitch season 400 is available at fittostitch.com for $49.99 plus shipping. Fit to Stitch is made possible in part by Elliott Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics, elliottbermantextiles.com.